Hello and welcome to my garden. Um, I haven't been online really much at all for the past few months. Uh, there's illness in the family which means that I have to focus my energies elsewhere for a while. Um, we're all juggling so many balls, aren't we? Anyway, that said, I wanted to share something really rather marvellous that's happened to me in the past few months. And this is that I now have aeroplanes. This is that I now have a or two who come and visit me. Here we go. Someone is just about to come into shot. Hello, mister. Hello, Ray. Don't be alarmed, it's just my ring light. Don't be alarmed. So, I wanted to share with you what it's like to have a little fox friend. I'm gonna try and get him to somewhere where he's going to be in shot. So, hello, Ray. Let's see if you do a jump up, hello. Good boy. So Ray is a dog fox and there he is. You can see him there. And what he's eating is a piece of chicken wing, which I strip all the meat off and give it the bones. <laughs> Meanwhile, the meat and the very small bones, they go to some other little creatures that I'm rather fond of. Um, Kylo. Um, so they have that. I've got neighbours hanging out the window wondering what I'm doing. So here's Ray and he will hang around for probably about an hour um, on the basis that if he goes I'm definitely not giving him any more chicken. But if he hangs about it's possible that I give him a little bit more. So it's a very noisy, kind of crunching, munching situation. But it's such a marvellous thing to have wildlife on your doorstep, even in the city. And you can see on Ray's flank, there is a little patch. Let's see if we can get him to jump up again. There he goes. There's a little patch on his flank. When he turns in the other direction, you'll be able to see. I think that he has a small patch of sarcoptic mange, which is a disease that's spread by a, a mite. Um, in humans, it's called scabies. Yeah. Um, now, scabies is one species across every animal that it infests, but it's a slightly different variant. So that the, hang on Ray, hang on, here you go, ready? Oh, he's a good boy. He's a good fox. So it's a slightly different variant. It prefers to be on a fox, or it prefers to be on a person, or it prefers to be on a cat. So it's very unusual, as far as I understand it, for there to be transmission from one species to another species. One more, Ray, and then I've got to save one for Vivian because she, she, gets, she gets chicken as well. So saving one for Vivian. So Vivian's his, his mate, I believe. Uh, she also comes at dusk. She also comes at dawn. So the scabies mite that causes sarcoptic mange can only be detected when they do a skin scrape and then they look under the microscope at the actual flakes of skin and see if there are actual mites in there. It's responsible for almost all of the cases of mange that foxes get. Now sadly I can't get veterinary treatment for Ray. Um, I have tried a number of different things. The problem is that um, the various fox rescue places when you phone them up they all recommend homeopathic treatment which as we all know is, is basically sugar pills. Um, on the basis that it won't do any harm to any other animals that have it. 
it's all gone look spoon empty ray spoon empty spoon empty i'm gonna put the spoon away um it's all gone it's all gone um so he now hasn't done nice snuffle about and we'll wait for vivian so um vets are obviously medical professionals so they all want to know before they prescribe a medicine first of all the weight of the animal that they're prescribing for so that they can get the dosage right and second of all they want a confirmation of the diagnosis so um, I can't find a vet who will prescribe for Ray um, without um, without me catching him <laughs> which I could do I mean you can see that he's very he's very used to it. Um, so they want me to, there you go, have a crunchy Kylo. You want one, Ray? Where have you gone? Buddy, do you want one? Crunchy. Here you go. Um, so they want me to um, trap Ray and bring him in so that he can be weighed and they can do a skin scrape, examine it under the microscope, uh, ensure that they're treating for the correct thing. I think this is silly because I think that you know it's such a broad the, the, the medicine that I'm thinking of the cat you can hear the cats they're, they're fighting Ray off because he was trying to go in my shed and they don't like him doing that um, it's quite a broad use this particular medication so it seems it seems a little bit silly to me as a non veterinary qualified person like just give him a mite treatment for for an animal that's between four and five kilos because that's what he is like it's the same stuff that you would put on the back of a cat's neck that was equivalent weight um but anyway i have to defer to the to the wisdom of the vets um if anybody has experience of this and knows uh, a way around it then that that would obviously be great so i'm stuck with either i give him um, a pretend medicine in his uh, medication bowls um, now don't please let's just not have the argument in, in, in comments about whether or not homeopathy works for animals so that's the situation with Ray so he has this patch on his flank which he, he's sitting there very nicely but you can't see the patch on his flank that I'm on about. But he worries at it like it's clearly itchy. Now, the other foxes that come, Vivian comes, um, there's another dog fox that comes at dawn. He's called Dennis. And Dennis brings a female fox with him sometimes who looks quite similar to Vivian. But I don't think it is Vivian. I think it's a, a fourth fox. Um, so there's at least four foxes. On, in my little urban area, uh, regularly visiting my garden, so I'm sure that that you have foxes where you are too. So anyway, so I can't I can't treat him for his sarcoptic mange, but one thing I can do is I can supplement his diet. Um, now, when Vivian first started visiting me, I noticed because I put out a, a bowl of crunchies for a for a local feral cat. Um, that I've never been able to get close enough to trap and neuter. Um, but he kicks around, plays with my cats. He's a lovely old gentleman. So I feed him with some, with some crunchies. And um, one day it was midnight. And um, unusually for me, I was, I was up at midnight and outside. And um, you are Ray, Ray, crunchy. There you go, there you go, there you go, and uh, and I noticed this fox, which was Ray. You know, he he was the first one to come. He, he and he's the most um, used to people. And I didn't realise that by putting food out for the feral cat, I was also providing a food source for the local foxes. But of course. You know, you create any regular, trustworthy food source and any wildlife with any sense is going to take advantage of that, whether it's putting out food for birds or stuff for badgers or hedgehogs or foxes. Um, and pretty much, the, you know, there's a whole range of different things that eat the same food as dogs and cats. 
So it's not hard for us to actually do a little bit extra to support wildlife in the gardens. Um, so what, I took photos of this, this incredible thing because I thought, wow, that's so amazing. And I thought, I, I, wonder, if, I wonder if that fox will come back. So uh, I just kept my eyes peeled and when I put out um, Crunchies for the Feral Cat, which I do dawn and dusk, um, I kind of sat outside for a little while and sure enough, um, the foxes were, were turning up. You see him there, he was just having a little worry of his little patch and it's like, I'm sorry, Ray, I know it's itchy, isn't it? Um, so, so Ray and Vivian, <laughs> and their daily visitors and it's a really nice break in the routine to have um, some interaction with um, local wildlife. They also bring me presents. Um, they've bought me a yellow Wellington boot, which uh, one of the cats is actually playing with at the moment. <laughs> and uh, they also, um, sometimes they play a bit of ball. It's a bit like playing fetch, but it's not as, there's not as much fetching goes on but there's lots of chasing the ball that goes on um, and they also play with the cats a lot particularly Vivian who very much enjoys doing chasey chasey around the benches around the table she loves doing that um, so I don't know if that's related to the fact that she's female or whether it's to do with her age or, or what the other thing that's really lovely to see and I'm hopeful that we'll get to see it tonight is when um, Vivian arrives she will do a kind of ritualistic greeting of Ray to demonstrate her submission and she will kind of um, do figure of eights around him and lick his mouth and do all the kind of things that you may have seen cats and dogs doing um, to each other. Um, all right Ray, all right my boy. Um, and that's lovely to see so close up. So um, I, don't, I don't interact with them beyond giving them um, food. I don't try and stroke them. I don't try and trap them. I don't try and look at them any closer. Um, I wouldn't want to um, touch Ray's fur without gloves on in case of catching any kind of scabies mites or anything like that from him. Um, so you know that's 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 a nice reminder you know not to not to kind of try and pet a wild animal you know i'm also aware that they are wild animals they're not pets so um you'll see that i always um i i did start out intending to never actually hand feed them and just like chuck the chicken onto the lawn and then let them eat it but ray is so keen that he actually jumps up on me before I've actually got the spoon out of the tub of the chicken so like that that has fallen by the wayside but I have stuck to um, feeding them from a spoon so I always feed them from a spoon I don't feed them by hand um, because something could happen like a, 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 an airplane could arrive it's a, it's there's no food on it Ray there's no food on it you can see he, he knows that that's the spoon that food arrives on I'm gonna put that out of the way Oops, sorry, drop the spoon. Drop the spoon, buddy bear. Drop the spoon. The thing that gets me is that they are completely... There you go. There you go, buddy. There you go, Kylo. The thing that gets me is that they are absolutely incredible at camouflage. And um, I don't know if you can see, the light is changing, so I'm going to just turn up the, the strength of the, the light that I'm using. There we go. Um, so as it gets darker, you might see that... Um, do you want another one, Ray? I can hear Vivian next door. She's on her way, isn't she? Do you want another one, buddy? Um, you see them just melt away into the, into the dark area. Um, and one, once it's gone out, out. watch out goodness me pregnant lady we've all been there um they can just melt away so even though they're they're, they're basically bright orange animals i mean they're, they're really very um um 
They're incredibly well camouflaged. Here you are, Kylo. There you go. Look at that one too. Um, which amazes me. So um, what I tend to see, because they're very clever, they, they know how to sit in the shadow. So what they tend to do is they tend to sit in a shadow and then they'll kind of sit up and expose this white patch on their chest. And at that point, I can see the, the white patch, so I'll know that they're there. But um, they'll happily um, sit out there for several hours. Um, and they also will um, go off and do fox things because they must um, patrol their territory and they must, um, you know, interact with other foxes. They must leave scent messages around the place. They must read scent messages that have been left by other foxes. Um, they must find the rest of their food. I'm only providing a, a small, tiny amount of food. I'm not providing anything like food that they could rely on because what I don't want to do is create a situation whereby um, they are dependent on me. Um, they have to remain independent. Although, Ray is, as we speak, polishing off the crunchies that I leave out for the bloody feral cat who isn't here to eat his crunchies on time. So this sometimes happens. Um, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna come back when Vivian arrives. Back again, slight interruption. I do have a lot of um, different things going on all the time at the moment. Um, so Vivian is here. Vivian, do you want this chicken leg? So Vivian is Ray's mate. I'm going to try and get her a bit closer, but the cats are hanging out. So let's move the cats using the medium of chicken. There you go. You go over there, Puss Cats. There you go. So they're over there. Let's see if I can get Vivian. Come on, Vivian. Come on. I'm going to chuck it onto there. Let's see if she comes and picks it up. Oh, there she is. Hello, Vivian. Now, <laughs> you may not be as au fait with foxes as I am. So you may not be able to tell them apart by their facial features. <laughs> You'll just have to believe me when I say that every fox has a very different face. And it doesn't take long before you can identify them by their faces. Eat your chicken then. Eat it, Vivian. We lost it already. Where did you put it? Where did you put it, Vivian? Did you put it over here? Why did you do that? There's no point in saving it for Ray because he's already had one. She sometimes does this. Here we are, Vivian. What's that? There you go. There you go, sweetheart. She is a lovely fox. She's got a lovely nature. She's very sweet. She's, she's taking her chicken bone over there, but she's not actually eating it. Now, I have known Vivian to actually bury her bones, um, which foxes do like squirrels do. Um, because foxes are really happy to eat meat that's rotted down, bones that have been in the soil for ages, so they, they are not bothered at all by that. So I've known, I've known Vivian to, to bury bones and dig them up. Um, I've never seen Ray do that. Ray just eats whatever he gets straight away. No planning for the future. Whereas Vivian's a bit of a saver. Um, we're all different, aren't we? So she will, she will do that. But also the other thing is that um, foxes have very strict hierarchies. And like I said, you know, if, if Ray hadn't sodded off, you would have seen Vivian do a very sweet little dance when she sees Ray. Um, but as it stands, the dominance is such that um, if a fox of higher dominance wants food and a fox of lower dominance has got food, the fox of higher dominance literally uses their flank to bash the other fox out of the way, make them drop the food, and then they, they take it and they make all sorts of noises. There's very there's a lot of communication goes on and 
it's not that they would want to you know starve each other or anything like that but it's a very um, a very marked indicator of dominance when you see them doing that to each other it was a shock to me the first time i saw um ray doing that to vivian i was like oh no it's it's fox domestic violence <laughs> but it's it's actually completely normal for for foxes to do that so it's not not a reason to worry if you ever if you ever see that and of course we're getting into the end of autumn now beginning of winter and soon will be the time of year where we're regaled with the sound of foxes in the mating season which can sound like someone is literally having their throat slit it sounds dreadful um but it's completely normal that's just the the, the, the sounds that they make um so vivian may um disappear at some point over the winter where she goes to earth um when she will um have her kits and she'll stay with them um for the first however long um, and then we'll hopefully we'll get to see some some babies at some point in the spring So that's something to look forward to So I hope you've enjoyed that little oh and here's my little feral cat friend There's no way you're gonna see him on the film because he's very shy um, So I hope you've enjoyed that little update um, about my local little wildlife project um, I do have lots of opinions about lots of things that are happening um, obviously um but um producing these videos takes a lot of work and at the moment i have no carer and i have a lot of demands on my time so i have to be really careful about what i'm spending my time on so that i don't leave something very important undone um so thank you for your forbearance and i will be back um when i can with um more content so I may put up a couple more bits and pieces about my non-feminism life um, so uh, do let me know with a, a like or a dislike whether or not you would enjoy that content um, welcome to anybody that's a new subscriber if you haven't subscribed yet just hit that subscribe button that would be great and I'll see you again soon bye